ಸುರೇಶ್ವರಿ ಭಗವತಿ ಗಂಗೆ
पवन सुत हनुमान की जगदम्बा माता की आप सभी को हार्दिक स्वागत करता हूँ हमारे कार्यक्रम में पहली बार टॉक बाय अनरलिया गंगा प्रसाद ऑन धर्मा My name is Analia Ganga Pasad. On behalf of my family and I, let me take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you to the fourth night of this Navaratri Yagna. Tonight, my task is a simple one where I will speak briefly on Dharma. What does Dharma mean? Dharma is an important Hindu, Buddhist, and yogic concept referring to a law or principle which governs the universe. For an individual to live out their dharma is for them to act in accordance with this law. Dharma is considered to be one of the three jewels of Buddhism alongside Sangha and Buddha, together paving the path to enlightenment. In Hinduism, it is one of the four main philosophical principles along with Artha, Karma and Moksha. It can also be understood as a law of righteousness and satya, truth, giving order to the customs, behaviors, and ethics which make life possible. The implication of dharma is that there is a right or true way for each person to carry out their life in order to serve both themselves and others. Dharma is closely related to the concepts of duty and selfless service or seva and is therefore a fundamental principle of yoga. Although it can be a challenging concept to grasp since it has no single word English translation, a close adaptation is right way of living. The word Dharma comes from the Sanskrit root word Dri, which means to hold, to maintain, or to preserve. In the early Vedas and other ancient Hindu texts, Dharma referred to the cosmic law that created the ordered universe from chaos. Later, it was applied to the other contexts, including human behaviors and ways of living that prevent society, family, and nature from descending into chaos. This included the concepts of duty, rights, religion, and morally appropriate behavior, and so Dharma came to understood as means to preserve and maintain righteousness. On an individual level, Dharma can refer to a personal mission or purpose. Traditionally, an individual's dharma is thought to be predetermined. Depending on karma, a soul is born into a particular caste or social group, either as a reward or a punishment for actions in the past life. The path in life is set by universal laws, and the only way to progress is to live within this path and work towards their destined purpose. According to the Bhagavad Gita, it is better to do your own dharma poorly than to do another's well. It is said that all beings must accept their dharma for order and harmony to exist in the world. If an individual is following the dharma, they are pursuing their truest calling and serving all other beings in the universe by playing their true role. To Hindus, all entities have their own dharma. Even the sun must shine and the bees must make honey. In Buddhism, Dharma additionally means acting in accordance with the teachings of Buddha and the Four Noble Truths. The result of living in this right way is, be is to believe self-realization and enlightenment. Above all, when life is aligned with your Dharma, it brings a sense of joy and fulfillment. Hari Om. Very good. One of the best expositions on dharma. Thank you, Analia. All right. In one part of her speech, she also said that because it is such an involved word, it is very e difficult to translate that word in English. So her whole speech is a translation. That word embodies so much. All right. 
And if you are joining us tonight for the first time, we are seeing a little portion of the Ram Charita Manas at the end. It is called Navadhanya. Navadhanya is nine dhanya. Bhagwan Shiva is telling to Parvati Ji that these nine things are dhanya. Dhanya means fortunate, blessed, great, good, wonderful, magnificent, all that. Hmm? Blessed. So we'll chant that portion and then we'll uh, recap and we'll come to our. See, Navadhanya means nine dhanya and we are doing nine nights. Huh? One dhanya per night. Hmm? And no bandhanya. <laughs> Navadhanya, no bandhanya. If you don't have Rama in front of you, just chant Sri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram in between. If you have Rama in front of you, then you chant along with us. This is Uttarkhand 127. Just four lines before 127. Sri Ram, Jai.
दुर्गा लक्ष्मी सरस्वती पाहि जगन माता माता की ओके सो यू नाइन टाइम भगवान टेल्स तो माँ पार्वती धन्या 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 नाइन टाइम लगे राइट सो व्हाट फर्स्ट धन्या धन्या सो धन्या धन्या देश ब्लेस इज दैट कंट्री वेयर व्हाट जहाँ सूरसरी सूरसरी मीन्स गंगा सूरसरी जन अदर नेम फॉर गंगा गंगा है इट मीन्स वेयर पीपल हैव ब्लेस इज दैट कंट्री वेयर पीपल ह a nice blend between bhakti and gyan devotion and knowledge best blessed is that place otherwise what happened people have a lot of devotion faith and all of that sort of thing but it blind no gyan blind faith blind faith good no somebody tell you somebody come and tell you the cow grazing in top of the roof Mm. The cow grazing in top the roof, but, but you say, you say if, if that man say it, had to be true, you know. Like blind faith, isn't it? You ever see a cow grazing on the roof? <laughs> because he say you believe. Blind faith. So in Hinduism, blind faith is not prescribed. You you tell first, show, demonstrate like that also. So you have some knowledge has to be there also. You have to, you have to do some thinking, thinking. Eh? reflection. The scriptures say, "Vichare na nivartate, nivartate." Means by vichar, by a lot of thinking, only will remove all our all the cobwebs of the mind. You know, our mind, we, our mind needs cobwebs. You know what cobwebs? When when your house have a lot of cobweb, you take a long broom. Well, be mindful of cobweb. <laughs> all wrong belief, wrong faith, wrong this, wrong understanding, all sorts of that has to be clar- clarified by a lot of proper knowledge. So the two things are prescribed, jnan and bhakti. Knowledge and devotion, not just one. If you only have knowledge also, dry that fellow. Intellectually, 
sound but dry, no rus. Hmm? That is like, you know what? They make baigan chokha and roti. Baigan chokha and roti. Huh? Roti have no salt, baigan chokha no salt, no pepper, no onion, no garlic, nothing. That is sada baigan chokha and sada roti. <laughs> you want to eat that? No, you want some nice chatak, masala and all that thing. Pepper and salt and garlic, isn't it? So knowledge alone with no devotion, no love, no faith, no that kind of thing, that knowledge alone is dry like that. Dry, roti and, what is that? Bread and water. Niras, it is called in Sanskrit, nirasa, means no ras. All right. So blessed is that place where all the people have a nice mix of devotion and knowledge. Blessed is that place where people take a holy dip in the traditional teachings to purify themselves. Because people go to Ganga to take a dip. So we take a dip in the Shastras. That is, that is knowledge that is coming down from guru to guru, guru to shishya. And we take a dip in that and purify ourselves. That is symbolic taking a dip in Ganga. All right. So that blesses that place. Dhanya des. Des means country, place, nation. Eh? The next one, number two, Dhanya. Dhanya nari pati vrata anu sari. Dhanya is that human being who can fix their mind properly. This is the idea. Eh? Fix the mind properly. Otherwise, our mind jumps like a monkey. Are we telling that? On second day, our mind jumps like monkey, I tell you. You're watching a nice TV show and you're following the story. And the commercial come on. And the commercial, you hear. And the bottle cap pop. And you see somebody drink there. And after they take the first drink, they go, ah. You forget the story and you're on the fridge now. The mind jump from here to? Yes, the fridge. Hey, hey. You only pop the thing in the fridge and you take a drink. Then, same time, your neighbor chonke something. And that smell reached by your window. <sighs> so now you're thinking about what to? Just now, when you come back by the TV, you forget where the remote there to. Because your mind gone? All about. And while eating also, that time you're supposed to be enjoying what you're eating, but you're thinking. Hmm? You take a bite, and you're thinking, boy, now it's no rata, I'm not supposed to be eating this thing. <laughs> so, while the tongue enjoying this thing, the mind also, you see, it's no ratam. I don't know what could happen. I eating this thing in Noratam. And now today have a special. <laughs> How much thing the mind thinking? Same time. Monkey mind. Chanchalam himala krishna pramati balavatradam. Tasyaham nigram manye. Vayore was dushkaram. Bhagavan. Arjuna tells to Bhagavan in Gita. So difficult to control mind. So blessed is that human being who could put their mind, center their mind on one thing and keep it fixed. At the end of that life, that person will surely attain higher and higher worlds. Otherwise, our mind like monkey. Eh? So that was Tanya, Nari, Pati. I told you that's just a representation of somebody who could fix their mind. He said, a woman who has Fidelity towards her husband. But it represents all people fixing their mind. Dhanya, hmm? no, number three. Dhanya so bhoop niti jokarai. Blessed is that king, that prime minister, that president who follows proper niti. 
a leader has a, a proper duty and to fulfill that duty as a leader, a prime minister. If he could fulfill that duty, blessed is that prime minister. Hmm. This is the idea. The duty is what? When we take the highest office, the duty is to steer the ship of the state so that it serves the welfare and benefit of all citizens. That is, that is the duty. But when the leaders get in there, they steer the ship of the state into their pockets. You see? And friends and family. That is the idea. So, blessed is that Prime Minister who can really follow Niti. Proper, proper policy, proper conduct, proper fulfillment of duty in that position. Then number four, today, this is Fourth Street. You see, we are going like that also. Dhanya so dvija, nija dharma natarai. This is today's one. Let us chant this line and we'll see. Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram This is a very wonderful word in Sanskrit. Dvija means, Dvi means two. Ja means birth. Hmm? Twice born. 
was born twice. Mm. So there are many, there are many creatures that have two births. You know that? Like for example, a bird. First, first that bird is born from the mother as an egg, right? There's one birth, and then that mother sits on that egg, and then after some time, chur 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 chur, that that bird comes out like that, right? So there's second bird. There's two birds or not? Two birds. Bird is also called veja. Uh, all the reptiles, you know. All reptiles, they are also called as dweja. Anything born from an egg is also called as dweja. Means two birth. Now see, human being, how he has two birth? Only one birth. So, meaning of dweja for human being is when we are born from mother, that is one birth. When we go to the Guru's house, and we take Janeo. You know that thread? That is second birth, because from that day, you become the son or the daughter of the Guru. This first parent was here. No, that's why I called Guru Kul. Kula means family. So you were born in this family, but now you take up residence in that family by the Guru. And that Guru does a ritual nicely and all, and gives that Janeo, that's red, with three strings like that, and a knot. Those three strings represent the three gunas, symbolically, Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas. And that knot represents Hridaya Granthi. Hridaya Granthi means our, the knot of bond, bondage, which all of us have in simple language. And the teacher teaches and teaches and teaches and teaches and teaches. And at some point in one's life, when one gets proper knowledge, one has to renounce everything. That Janeo also is thrown out away. For sannyasis, swamis, they don't wear Janeo. All three before that, Brahmacha, Brahmachari, Grihasthi, Vanaprasthi, all these three, they wear Janeo. But when that person gets proper knowledge and breaks, that snaps that knot of knowledge, that Janeo is Throw not. Hmm? So now, which is the second birth? When I'm born in my house, and then my, and this is the, the old tradition, right? The parent is to take that child and take them by the guru and still live with that guru, cool, live with the guru's family. And he'll stay there and learn until he is 25. And now, nowadays, they bring them, bring them to, not guru school, Chinmaya school. Guru Kul. Now they bring them to the school and leave. And you know, you all don't know because you don't stay there, but we stay there. Now when they bring them, they just now, the new, new term just started. Na? Now instead of the children crying, the parents crying. Kaljuk <laughs> gets so bad. They, they bring the child, and he go on there, and he meet friend, and he well running and jumping and all about. Mother and father watching from behind, from behind the fig tree, and them crying. <laughs> hmm? But what is this? But anyway, the now, nowadays modern education is. Let me tell you modern education, and this modern education, which all of us are subject to, this modern education. This was brought to us and to India and to the world by the British people, right? By the British people. So let me tell you how it works, especially now in 2022, how it is working. You come to the school, we teach all nice values, all proper behavior and etiquette, and we teach all the wonderful um, philosophy and different things there, along with their education, and then they go home, and the mother and father give them a tablet and a cell phone, and then whatever we do, they undo. This is modern education. That is why our education system in Trinidad and Tobago is a mess. Absolute mess. Because when you teach values here, they undo all the values in the home. You teach the child in the school, speak properly, have respect. You um, respect your fellow classmates and have 
um, reverence for your teacher and all of that. And when they go home, they're looking on. And what is seeing? All the wrong things, all the terrible things. And not, not only that, they're hearing it in the house too. Seeing it on social media and hearing it in the house. So we're trying to do something in the school. In the home, it is undone. So if you walk one step forward and two steps backward, where you go reach? <laughs> one fellow reached to work 11 o'clock in the day. So the boss asked him, what happened? He said, boss, why, boss, now why, why you come so late? He said, boss, outside there's a terrible snowstorm and ice on the road. And any time I walk one footstep forward, the wind blow me back two footsteps. Anytime I walk one step forward, the wind blow me back, two step. He said, then how you reach here? He said, man, I turn wrong and I be going home. <laughs> that thing ain't make the man end up in work. Anyway. So, if we teach some value-based education in the school, and that is undone in the home, then that nation is not going to go anywhere. You see? So therefore, the education, the system itself, the system itself has a massive defect. And it, there is no way to correct that defect within the system. That is why that child was isolated from the home and lived with the guru until his education is over. That is why that was there. With the rishis, they, they just did not um, come up with the idea just like that. Huh? That was long years of experimentation to see what works the best for education and educating a nation. But now things gone. Shastra me Shastra me kaite hai ghor kalyuk. So now when that child was taken from the home and taken to the guru's house to start his education, the guru will give him that janeu through a ceremony and when that janeu is given then that child is said to be a dvija. Dvija means twice born. Hmm. No. Dhanya so dvija. Blessed is that dvija. Now see, why he went there? He didn't go there to... Uh, that child didn't go there to play. The child didn't go there to, um, what do you call, learn gardening. The child goes to the guru to get knowledge, right? So when he goes to that gurukul, he will acquire knowledge from that guru and that guru will tell all scriptural teachings, all what his duties are and that those duties will be based on that child's caste. And this is a big, big, big topic now. Let me tell you this thing. Yeah? Because Dvija word, Dvija word has been used um, traditionally to mean one who is of the Brahmin caste. This is how it is, the word is used. Right? This is the first thing. Second thing I'm telling you, the word itself, the etymology of the word means one who has a second birth by getting janeu. So now there are four castes, right? The Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. These are the four castes. The first three, they usually get that janeu. The last one, the Shudra caste, doesn't get janeu. That is only, not, nothing is wrong with that system also. Eh? The last one doesn't get genuine. It is like 
look here. I'll give you a story. One little fella, he write in a letter. So um, the neighbor asked him. He said, "What are you doing?" He said, "I write in a letter." He said, "To who?" He said, "To my brother." The neighbor said, "But you too little, you can write." He said, yeah, "That's no problem. My brother, he little too, he can read too." <laughs> so I can write, he can read. In any case, both are we in the same? <laughs> now look here. If the person cannot read. Mm. Does it make any sense writing him a letter? If the, the other fellow cannot read, does, and you could write, let us say, does it make any sense writing him a letter? No. The better thing might be to do, Arey bhaiya, come, let me teach you how to read. Why are you writing him a letter? No, 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 I want him to feel good. Now he, everybody get letter, he get letter too. That doesn't make no sense. When you're trying to make him get a false sense of goodness. That he, everybody get letter, so he get letter too. Best thing is call him and teach him how to read. This last uh, Shudra caste have certain duties for which knowledge is not required. I'll give you a simple example. A simple example, right? In the ashram, we hire masons. So anytime you hire a mason, you can't just hire a mason. You have to hire also a helper. You know that? Right? So the mason gets a higher salary and the helper gets a? Correct? Lower salary. Right. So when, when you hire the helper, does that helper have to know how to put blocks? No. It is the mason who has to know how to put blocks, isn't it? The helper, he just come there and mix mortar and give this fella. Now you see, you have to be careful also because if you are higher and you have to control your work. Eh? Three fellas walk into the village. One digging a hole. He dig a hole. The next, not three fellas, two fellas. He, one dig a hole, and the next one come and full back the hole. They gone 20 feet. The first one dig a hole again, second one come and full back the hole. They walk 20 feet again, first one dig a hole, second one full back the hole. So the villagers were, what kind of thing is this? Let me see pep vocal. <laughs> what is this? One digging a hole and one? Full it back. So the villagers come together all and come and they approach these two. What happened to all? Are you crazy or what? Who paying all of them to do this? What are you doing? One digging a hole, next one full it back. They say, no, no, no. But see, see what happened. The boss man hired three of you. One and we had to dig the hole. The next man had to put the plant, and the third man had to full back the hole. He said, that man absent today in the middle right now. The middle fella, he absent today. So he, he absent, but we shouldn't lose that day work. So if you hire a mason and a helper, and the mason doesn't come to work, that helper come and he mix in mortar where you go put in the fridge or what? <laughs> you have to be really careful. You have to make sure when the helper is there, the mason also has to be there. So now, there is no need for that helper to have any knowledge 
of making a straight wall, laying blocks, masonry, plastering. He doesn't have to know. So there are certain types of work, certain type of jobs and duties, really you don't need any skill, correct? That is in Trinidad, ordinary English called unskilled laborer. Have you heard that? So this fellow doesn't actually, you also should not feel real, but everybody feel that everybody should go to school and everybody should get this degree and that degree. But who do the unskilled labor? You wait for Venice to come. The society and, and this now this is the important point about caste system. This is the important point about caste system. Caste system has nothing to do with Hindus and Indians. Eh? Caste system is a universal division of labor system that is ubiquitous, present all over the earth. If you go to the Inuit people in the North Pole, or you go to the Aborigines in Australia, or you go wherever, everybody have a caste system. The reason is, the reason why a caste system is important is every society needs to have those who think, those who implement, uh, think and come up with ideas, those who implement the ideas, those who raise the resources to implement the ideas and those who do the actual labor to implement that idea. If these four are not there, that society cannot function. Whether it is Inuit society or Aboriginal society or Indian society or Trini society, you must have the four groups. Look, look I'll give you a simple example. Just now we were, we were building that, our school there, right? Big school. There was an architect and a structural engineer who never lifted one shovel. An architect and a structural engineer, they were sitting in their offices, nice AC offices. And they conceptualized the whole thing. Quantity surveyor and different people like that. They are called as Brahmanas. If you give them a shovel, that will break their hand. <laughs> the heaviest thing they're lifting that pen. So they are the ones who come up with concept and idea, conceptualization, idea, and planning, and visualizing, and all that kind of thing, right? They're called as Brahmanas. Then, you need somebody who is going, to, whatever concept they come up with, you need somebody now to make sure that concept is implemented there. That was Pani's king. Pani king was there for that job. After Pani king passed, Mr. Kedan picked up that job. That idea has to be materialized, actualized. So an implementer. That person who is doing that is called a Kshatriya, an administrator. He administrates, makes sure that everything gets done. He pushes this one, pushes that one. Do this, get that done. An administrator. Then, there are people who have to raise money in various ways to get that thing done. There are people, who, they, they don't come there to push anything, they don't conceptualize anything, but they are working hard outside raising money. They are called as Vaishyas. Now, if you have people raise money, you have people pushing, and you have people conceptualizing, and there's nobody to push. You have to have foot soldiers down in, in, the, in the trenches who are actually doing the the work, they are called as Shudras. And anyone missing here, you'll get a school with the roof in the ground and the post up. <laughs> Nobody could be missing. All four have to be there. Hmm? And if you tell me, 
to do a structural, to do some structural engineering with that building. I don't know head nor tail. Everybody have their own specialty and they are required. Hmm? Now, those who are the Brahmanas, they have certain types of duties. Those who are Kshatriyas, they have certain type of duties. Those who are Vaishyas, they have certain type of duties. And those who are Shudras, they have certain type of duties. And all have to do their duty. And all are required for any society to function. This is first thing. Eh? Second thing. What, when we say that the society has four castes, what we mean to say, this person is predominantly a Brahmana, this fellow is predominantly a Kshatriya, this fellow is predominantly a Vaishya, and this fellow is predominantly a Shudra. We, talk, we mean predominantly. I'll show you why. Suppose this fellow is Brahmana. Right? His duty, like I told you, our architect and our structural engineer and quantity surveyor and all of them were sitting in the office and doing all the conceptualization and all the things, right? Visualizing and all that. That fellow predominantly does that work, but when he goes home, he has to clean his toilet and bathroom or not? And wash his wares or not? Who, who wash it for him? So when, he, when you're cleaning your toilet and your bathroom and, and all of that sort of thing, that is Shudra work. Isn't it? So he's predominantly a Brahmana, but he has all the other three gunas also. He has to have. In, the, in every human being, he must have all the other three, otherwise he cannot function also. Not only the society can, can, um, will not function without all four, with, or the society will not function with one missing, the human being also cannot function with one missing. You have to have all the four gunas in you. Hmm. See, suppose you have only one guna and you don't, you know, for such a person, he cannot survive in society. You don't know how to work and make money. What will happen to you? That's Vaishya karma. Vaishya karma, isn't it? Making money is Vaishya karma. So if you have Brahmana qualities and you don't know how to make money, what will happen to you? When you end up in the street, you become a vagrant. So this Vaishya karma. So uh, the Brahmana has predominantly Brahmana qualities, but he has to know how to protect his family, the Kshatriya guna. How to make money for his family, that's Vaishya Guna. And how to wash his wares and his clothes. Or wash his body even. So he has to have all four. People have all of this wrong understanding about all sorts of things about this caste system. First of all, caste system, Bhagavan says in Bhagavad Gita very clearly, Chatur Varnyam Maya Sishtam Guna Karma Vibhagata. Vibhagashaha. That I have made the four guna, four caste, but I have divided them based on their gunas. And their karma means their duties. Guna means qualities, and karma means their duties. Hmm? And how you will know what, is, what are your qualities and what are your duties? You don't have to know. Nobody has to know. Why? Look here. So many of you are sitting here, right? Just follow me now. Some of you became business people. Some of you became doctors. Some of you became teachers. Some of you became taxi drivers. Some of you became cane cutters. Some, well, not gone now. So, no cane cutters anymore. Some of you became um, office workers, clerks, this, that. You have various professions sitting here, right? Professors, this, that. Oh, when you were... 10 years old or 15 years old, do you plan to become that thing? Huh? But who planned from 10 years old to become what you are today? Tell. Nobody has to plan. You don't have to know also. Your gunas will take you directly where you are supposed to, where you're supposed to be. You jump high or jump low, you will end up doing exactly what you are doing. 
today because you are not people have this misunderstanding it's a delusion only that no I planned out my life I planned out everything and, and I planned out the work and I work out the plan this life is, I'll tell you some Bhagavan Shankaracharya says a very nice thing I want to read it for you Janmantara Krita Sanskaraha Praninam Varta Mana Janmani Swakarya Vimukhatvena Abhivyakta Swabhavaha Sa Prabhavaha Yesham Gunana Te Swabhava Prabhavaha Gunaha Prabhavaha Gunaha What it means to say? I'll go back over the words again. He is explaining this is a very profound concept. Eh? He's explaining how we end up becoming a Brahmana, a Vaishya, Kshatriya, Vaishya, or Shudra. How we end up like that. And you don't have to figure out what you are. Your gunas will take you straight there. Any teacher who is sitting here, your gunas made you a teacher. You, you think that you decided to become a teacher. But if you go the other place, you would still end up. Here, your gunas will take you right where you're supposed to be only. He said, Janmantara Krita Sanskaraha. Because all my previous birth, Janmantara. Janmantara means many, many births, previous births. Janmantara Krita. All the karmas which I did in countless births. All those karmas, they have added up and added up and they have made me into what I um, and that is how I turned out to be a teacher and I want to not be a taxi driver I want to not to be a, uh, a businessman I want to not to be a professor I want to not to be a doctor I want to not to be a laborer and a countless birds of doing karma you know if you really study this really truly if you study this thing you will realize If this line is studied, you will realize being a Brahmana, a Kshatriya, a Vaishya, or a Shudra has nothing to do with parentage. Why? Because parents cannot transfer sanskar or gunas to a child. That is Janmantara Krita Sanskara. Isn't it? Janma means all my previous births, all the karmas which I have done. And one person's karma cannot be transferred to another person's karma, isn't it? To another person. Everybody gets his own karma. Karma is non-transferable. Eh? Please understand this thing. Karma is like an airline ticket. If you buy an airline ticket to go to Miami and you cannot make it to Miami because you got COVID, you cannot go and tell Caribbean Airlines, look, I can go, but I want to give my wife the ticket. Let she go. Caribbean Airlines go, go ask you, oh, she get COVID or you get COVID? Or whatever. They, they go think you want? Loco, yes. <laughs> Somebody say down there. You, nowhere, no airline on the earth transfers ticket. If the ticket is in your name only, you could go with that. And if you don't go, that is it. You can't transfer it. So karma is like that. The one who does the karma, only he gets the result nobody else it is non-transferable so Bhagavan Shankaracharya is telling like this all the countless births I have done you see I perhaps used to like scriptures in previous birth you go know what you liked I perhaps used to like scriptures and Sanskrit so I used to go on reading 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 scriptures studying Sanskrit this that 
And it's true. It is true also. I, I discovered that very early in life because I realized Sanskrit was so easy for me. And the other person, when you tell him, when he said, Sanskrit, oh God, I And for me, that's like a duck taking to water. You see? That's called Janmantara, Krita Sanskara. What a word, Bhagavan Shankaracharya. Pranina Vartamana Janmani. I mean, that thing has now manifested in this present life of the jiva. So that has to do just definitely with the person's all previous births and all that kind of thing. And it has now come to pass. And that is how a person becomes a brahmana or a kshatriya or a vaishya or a shudra. Hmm? That is how. Look here, okay. I'll give you a simple example. Ma Mahatma Gandhiji was born in a family where they were call, called as Banyas. Banyas means uh, business people, right? Gandhiji. But have you ever seen a greater leader in this world than Mahatma Gandhiji? He, was, he became a world leader anywhere you go on this earth. Everybody knows Mahatma Gandhiji. Being a leader, leader is Kshatriya Karma. Kshatriya. So he's born in this family, but his guna is Kshatriya. Leaders are Kshatriyas. Hmm? All right. So the all gunas, I told you, all gunas are there in all societies. Means all castes are there in all societies, first thing. Second thing, all castes are there in, in same one human being also. It must be there. And then Bhagwan Shankaracharya explains how that guna comes in that person, how that quality comes in that person. Janmantra Krita Sanskara. From countless births, I have practiced that thing, practiced that thing. That's why you have something called a child prodigy. You know what child prodigy? Man, I see a musician here. That little boy, he far is a musician. He can't even reach the tabla and he don't play. The tabla higher than he. And done playing. You see? you see? Child prodigy. Janmantara Krita Sanskara. And all the duties are aligned exactly like that. Huh? That is how we that is how we become what we are today. So Bhagwan Sri Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita the duties now of the four castes. That I'll tell you the duties of the four castes. Bhagavan himself tells, based on guna and karma, he tells in Bhagavad Gita. Let us chant a little bit, you see. Bro. 
Bhagwan names the four castes. Now, how is this is tied to what we are our topic today? Dhanya Dvija. Dhanya Dvija. It means to say that because of our past karmas, all of us have belonged to one of these castes. On one more point, we'll all right. Eh? No caste is more important than any other caste. Eh? In this body also, you have brain. Brain is Brahmana. Brain is Brahmana. Then you have muscles. Kshatriya. Muscles, Kshatriya. Please pay attention to this. Brain is Brahmana. Muscles, Kshatriya. Then you have the cells that metabol metabolize and produce energy. They are vicious. And then you have so many cells that are responsible for excretion, sweat, and all the different types of, huh? that is, they are called as shudras. Now you tell me, I want to tell you, you want you to tell me which is the most important now. If one of them strike, <laughs> tell. <laughs> one of them strike, tell what will happen. So now who is the most important? Not all of them is same, isn't it? All the same. Even when you're sleeping and your brain not working, the other fellows and them working. You see? So this thing about this one more important and that one more important and the other one more important. Let me tell you something. If the garbage collectors stop collecting garbage tomorrow, ah, for the next month, then you will see. Then you will know. Mm -hmm. Everybody just as important. So what the, the Chopa is telling in the Ramayana is, blessed is that person who has been given a certain duty and he sticks to that duty. Because if one strike, if one of them strike, it's real trouble. Hmm. So we have to stick to that duty. That is, that is the idea. Huh? And now, in Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan outlines now who are the four castes and what their duties are. So why should I tell that? Gita tell. Hmm? Brahmana, Kshatriya, 
Visham means Vaishya and Shudra. These are the four. He tells. Karmani Pravivaktani Swabhava Prabhavai Gunaihi. And Bhagavan tells so nicely, explains so. Bhagavad Gita it really clarifies everything, all the misconception, misunderstanding, all the confusion in people's mind and everything. Bhagavad Gita clarifies all of it. That's why Gita is there. He uses Swabhava word, Swabhava, 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 Swabhava. In just these four verses, he uses Swabhava five times. Swa means one's own self. Bhava means one's own natya. Swabhava, one's own natya. Now, if you have a particular natya, right? Let me say, let us just say, you a person who likes gulab jamun. Right? You like gulab jamun. Did I create that like in you? Can somebody else create that like in you? No, if you like gulab jamun, you created that like yourself, isn't it? The neighbor didn't help you to create that like. You created it like yourself. That's why, and the other person right there, that's why, see, a parent will have two children. Two children, and feeding them the same food. And one like baigan, and one like tomatoes. So the parent created that? No, no, the parent feeding the same food. That comes swabhava jam, and that, that's what I was explaining to you. Janmantara krita karma from previous births. As I like one like this and the other one like that. That has nothing to do with anybody else. I create my own personality, my own nature, my own swabhava. That is the idea. And Bhagavan uses that thing five times in four verses. Swabhava word. Swabhava, jump. Born from my own nature. It means to say, I was the. If you constantly play tennis, you go become a good tennis player. In your next birth, man, you're, by the time you're born, you take up a racket. Yeah. Hmm? One. I'll tell you this story. I told you already, but I know you forget. Um, one pickpocket, you know that pickpocket? Uh, they don't come by me because they have nothing to pick, you know. <laughs> so one pickpocket, he on a train, and he pick a lady pocket. An unknown, unbeknownst to him, uh, when he picked the lady pocket, the lady picked he pocket too. <laughs> so when he picked the lady pocket and he got to put she wallet or purse or whatever in he pocket, he realized he pocket empty. And the lady looked at him and smiled. Then he realized, well, he's a pickpocket, but he just get his own pocket. So anyway, he tell and she know. He say, we in Trini language, huh? we, you is such a masterful pickpocket, you pick my pocket too. Imagine, I am such a masterful pickpocket and you are such a masterful pickpocket. If two of we get married and we have a son, Imagine what kind of phenomenal pickpocket he will be. <laughs> hmm? So she said, that's a good idea. So the two of them get married. And they were waiting for the birth of their son. And on the day of that delivery, two of them eager to see the son. And what happened? Unfortunately, by dint of providence, that fellow born with a two hand closed. And all where they try to open his hand, he hand can't 
open. And the two of them get miserable. Because if his hand can open, how he go pick pocket? <laughs> he born with his two hand closed. So they carry him by this doctor and that surgeon and this all about to try to open his hand. And they couldn't. And finally they came by a psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist take a golden chain with a diamond hanging at the end. And the psychiatrist swing it in front of the eye. And the moment he see that, he opened me two hands. <laughs> and when he opened me two hands, the two rings of the doctor who delivered him was in his hand that time also. <laughs> yeah, he, he born picked not to, he, as he come out from the womb, he don't take the two ring at the doctor. Mm. But if this person is doing this thing, that means to say, in his previous birth, he was a masterful people. How he born doing that? And you, that's why I, told, I was telling you, you see children from birth, they, they drift in a certain direction. And this is also connected to what our previous state of um, the nation is. Eh? If we are attracting in our homes crooks and criminals, if we are attracting, that means to say in this home also that same type of guna is, is there. So I am attracting a jiva who is who in his previous birth he was engaged in, in criminality. So I'm attracting that jiva to my home. So I have to really make sure that my gunas and karmas and qualities and all that, they are good so that I will attract a good jiva to my home. But everywhere, young, young fellas, they're going to hold up the, the penny wise, you saw? So because that is the type of jivas we are attracting in the home. I have to make sure that I have the good gunas, so I attract a good jiva. That is the idea. So now, Bhagavan tells, the Swabhava jam that was born, by, created by me only over a long period of time. And he says, the first one is called as Brahmana. And Brahmana karma, shamo, damas, tapa, shaucham, chantihi, arjavam, cha, jnanam, vijnanam, astikyam. How many duties or things for a Brahmana to do. One who has Brahmana qualities, he has to engage in control of the mind. You imagine, the architect, the structural engineer, he doesn't control his mind properly. He's a structural engineer, but he doesn't control his mind properly, and he's putting the specs of a steel beam. He's writing the specs of a steel beam. Then the fabricators have to fabricate that. And if he write that specs wrong, the fabricators fabricate something wrong, and we come and we put this steel beam over the head of children in the school. And there's a slight earthquake, and the steel beam comes down. What will happen to children? So he has to have this shama, that control of all the vagaries of the mind. He has to control shama, dhamma, control all his limbs. Tapa, austerities, uh, what we call uh, tapas, austerities, chaucham, cleanliness, kshanti, forgiveness, arjavam, straightforwardness. Huh? These, these are qualities of brahmana. And this is how you know who is really a brahmana. Straightforward. No dilly dally. When you ask a question, you tell all around the bush except that. Jnanam, knowledge, vijnanam, wisdom. These are qualities of a brahmana. And this is what he's supposed to imbibe. This is the idea. Then, 
शौर्यम तेजो धृतिदाक्ष्यम युद्धे चाप्यपलायनम दानमीश्वर भाव क्षत्र कर्म क्षत्रिय नेक्स्ट वन क्षत्रिय वट इज क्वालिटीज वट इज सपोज टू मेन्टेन शौर्यम मीन ब्रेवरी वालो हिरोइजम फर्स्ट थिंग यू रन अवे एन हाइट One fella telling his friend and them, and one friend asking the fella, he say, "I hope you have good control over your wife." You know. That fella say, "What? Man, even this morning I had my wife down on her knees." Then other fella say, "Really? What? How she was down on her knees?" He say, "She run me with the bill now, and I run and hide under the bed." And she go down and she knees and she's fine. They land. Come out from under there. Come out from under there. She was down on she knees. So he has no valor, no bravery. He run and hide under the the bed. So the Kshatriya karma is to be be brave. Tejo, Tejo means bold here. Bold. Kshatriya. Dhriti, fortitude. Daksham. Daksham means uprightness. You see, a police officer is supposed to stand like that. If you come and see a police officer, a police officer is supposed to be like an exclamation mark, not like a question mark. You know? <laughs> That's called daksham. Soldier. If the siren blow and the fireman in the fire station, just turn and pull the blanket the next side. He's not kshatriya. You see, your house burn down, then he grab my wap. Dakshyam, supposed to be straight and upright. Attention, that is the idea. Yudhe cha pe palayan, yudhe cha api. Apalayanam. Apalayanam means he never runs away from a battle. Never runs away. Never turns. Like Ravan. Ravan is a pakka kshatriya. Man, if do or die. Isn't it? Everybody tell him to turn wrong. No. No, no. Dhanam Ishwara Bhavascha. This is such nice way. A kshatriya. Is one who is supposed to be very generous in dan. Dan means to give. Anything he have, kshatriya is about. Arjuna was like that. Duryodhan even better. Give fast. Dan. Ishwar Bhavascha. Ishwar Bhavascha. A kshatriya is supposed to move with lordliness, with majesty, like that. Is it moving? Not when it moves. You one step today, one step tomorrow. You move in with thire thire. Half dead, half dead. Not kshatriya guna. So these are kshatriya guna karma and all. What how they are supposed to keep themselves? You see. And the next two. Vaishya and Shudra, they are given in one verse. One verse wraps up the two. Brahmana Kshatriya are given a verse by themselves. Vaishya and Shudra, Bhagwan gives complete both in one verse. Vaishya Karma, Krishika or Akshavani, Jam. Vaishya Karma, Subhava Jam. Vaishya Karma is agriculture, Krishi. Gauraksha means rain, cows. And last, Vanijam. Vanijam means trade, selling, buying and selling. Buying and selling, making money. There are pakka, good, proper vaishya karma. Buy and sell, make money like that. And last, shudra karma. Paricharyatma kam karma shudra syapi swabhavajam. Paricharyatma kam means to serve others. So the boss tell you, do this, do it. The, the, the manager tells, do this, we do it. Eh? 
One fella, he walking in the village looking for work. So the boss tell him, he come and see a man by the house. He says, sir, you have any work for me? I'm looking for a little job. The man said, well, I have to paint my porch. You paint it? He said, yeah, 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 give me, give me. Give me the paint and brush. I'll paint the porch. The man tell him, he said, well, in the garage, you have paint and you have brush. Go and paint the porch. He said, how much are you going to pay me? He said, I'm going to pay you $50. I said, okay, hey, go paint it. He gone and he painted and he come back in no time. The boss said, you finish? He said, yeah, finish. He said, but it wasn't a, 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 a Porsche, you know, it was a Lamborghini. <laughs> he take the paint and bring it on penny man car. He's a porch, he wanna be looking for a Porsche. <laughs> but that is only a fake story, and it's not a real story. <laughs> But it means to say the Shudra should have the disposition, disposition, this is my boss, this is my, the one who gives me a salary and he wants me to do this, let me go on, do it. But do, no questions asked. He told me to do this, I am going to do it. Otherwise what happens? And people just don't do their duty. And what is being spoken about in the Ramayana verse is the one who adheres to his duty. I'll give you a proper example of how people that always be committing sin and that's how they're always suffering. Let me just tell you the example. We are building the ashram. So the, I down below and the boss man standing down below. The boss man send the worker up. He say, boy, we get this expensive um, sealant. It's a kind of pitch tar sealant. You climb up there and you see this concrete guttering that we made on the roof over there, you take this tar and you spread it in the whole guttering so that it will seal the concrete guttering and then there will be no leaks. Right? So I was standing there when the boss tell him. Now see, he, a, a shudra is supposed, the boss tell you go and do this, you do exactly as the boss. Right? So he gone up. Well, the boss gone that side to see something else, I gone out. After a little while, we come back and all. He done, he done the work and he come down. So the boss asked him, you finished, boy? Yeah, yeah, boss, I finish, I finish. He knows the boss not going to climb up there and the swami not going to climb up there. He knows that. After some time, it so happened that something happened there and I actually put a ladder and I climb up there. Right? You know what he did? Because you know the boss gone so and I gone so, he take the whole pan of tar, pitch, and he empty it in one corner and he sit on there for the rest of the time and that was it. When the verse talks about everybody adhering to their duty, if that is your duty and the boss tells you to go and do it, this is what you're supposed to do. Now see, you cause, now that thing leaking now, eh? that leaking for years. So you cause so much of inconvenience for so many people for all of these years, waste of this uh, product and so many things. How a person like that will not suffer? It means you collect pay for doing something which you did not do. So first, like the first part, first sin, you collect pay for something which you did not do. Second thing is, you cause, because you throw it in one corner, there's a puddle in the corner, there's the water stain right there. Then you cause the, uh, also the loss to a big charitable organization, people who beg in for money, you cause loss to that. How many pop in one thing? So the, the, ver the, the verse, the important word in the verse, I'm telling you, is this. Danya eh? so dvija. And all the caste are, uh, uh, me, uh, meant dhanya so dvija, nija dharma natarai, means his duty, he does not waver from that. 
That is your duty. You make sure that you do that. If you are a teacher, your duty is to go and teach the students in the school. No, no, no. I had a union. You're not going to protect me. Them children learn and they don't learn. I don't care. That is not a teacher. That is not a teacher. And that is pop. A teacher actually tell me that. So I'm saying, I go and teach it. They learn, they don't learn. I, I don't care. So what is this book? You don't waver from that duty. This is your duty and you do that. Whichever caste. And I told none of the caste more important than the none. Huh? All right. Now see how just that one line. How many things are there to cover in that? Eh? Okay. Now that is number four over. Still five left. Okay, so now I will call on Andrew to conduct the next part of the program, and then we'll see after that. Hello, and good night. Um, tonight we are Tonight we are going to honor three families, and the first one would be the Manwa family, and we'd like Mrs. Manwa to come up to receive her token. The second family would be the Ramlochan family. Is anybody from the Ramlochan family from the street? If not, we'll ask some member of the Ganga Pasad family to collect on their behalf. And the third family would be the Ganga Pasad family. And Mala Ramada would be the person to collect on behalf of the Ganga Pasad family. All right, and I just wanted to state something. We are in the fourth night of the nine nights, Yagna. And once Swami is available next year, we would like to have him um, do the Yagna next year and probably for the next 25 years. Are you? So, um, you know that you just have to request for the Yagna to be in your place for next year. We'll, um, we'll tell the dates and all in whichever street you live. And if you want the Yagna to be in your place, you please tell from now so that we can block the date for you. Otherwise, in last minute, somebody don't take the date. So it, please tell Andrew or Anna or Mala or one of them, Anita, they're here. Okay. Uh, some quick announcements. And then we will have the RT. And then we'll have cutting off the cake. I want that to come fast here. Let me do it how you're here. <laughs> okay. Um, on Sunday, we have the 25th anniversary satsang of the Chinmay Mission. It is amazing how 25 years have already passed. Uh, Sunday is the actual 25th anniversary. At the ashram, you're all invited to come from 7 to 9 o'clock. Huh? Please come there, and then Monday we'll resume. 
carry on with our yagna. No street will get left out, eh? don't worry. Wherever we will stop, we'll continue from there. On the 16th of October, we have Diwali Dosa Day. We're making dosas in the hundreds and hundreds. Come and try one of the new hybrid dosas. <laughs> hybrid dosas. Our Chinmay Vidyalai and Tulsidas campus, uh, what the Minister of Education called as a, what is that? Which was the word she used about? Huh? Beacon, correct. A beacon, she called, um, in education in Trinidad and Tobago. Our school is now taking on students for the Form 6. Please tell others also and in, encourage them to join our Form 6. Okay. Aghor Pant group today, Vaya and all the family came and sang bhajans for us. Thank you so much. Okay. So, um, the Ganga Pasad family, Kushi, Selina, Amar, Ambika, and all of them, they will do Arti and then we'll have the cutting of the cake because several people's birthday today. Please have a look at our bookstall. There are many titles. Practice of Vedanta, the Upanishad, Hindu culture. This book is a very famous book. It was presented to the president of India by Guruji himself. A nice book. And Shishu Vihar. This is for kindergarten children to read them stories and tell them things from this. Huh? Okay. Let us have Arti and then we'll have birthday.